The first one I want to talk about here is a new Insidious movie. I think y'all are going to be just as shocked as me as like another one. And guys, get ready. It's not one Insidious movie. It's Dose. You're, are you ready for two more? Oh, dude. So they Sony dates new Insidious movie for summer 2025. So it's going to be releasing uh, August 29th, 2025. And I thought I already knew what this Insidious movie was going to be about. But then I see here in the article, it says, no further details about this project were disclosed. But this is not the Jeremy Slater helmed thread in Insidious Tell, a spin-off starring Mandy Moore and Kumail Nanjiani, which we first reported on. That's the movie I thought this was that they were talking about. No, this is a completely one. So let me give you even what that movie is. So Insidious, uh, Kumail uh, Nanjiani. I thought this one actually I am excited because I'll tell you right now, I was not a fan of the new Insidious movie. I was so let down. Let's talk about that too. So I'm all over the place here, just going up. So the latest Insidious movie called The Red Door. I was so excited, man. Patrick Wilson was directing it. They're bringing back the original family from that first movie. I was like, dude, this is going to rule. It's going to be awesome. Let's go. Oh, that movie spent 70% of the time recapping the events of the first two movies, which I understand. The second movie ended with them losing their memory, so they needed to like re-remember everything that happened to them. But I'm like, there should have been a way for you to do that within like the first 10 to 15 minutes and then have the movie be about new stuff, new haunts and all that. Because when the movie was getting good was the last 10, 15 minutes when they were doing new stuff. But other than that, major disappointment. But uh, even with it being a disappointment, let's look at the box office. The box office for this was insane. I think it was one of the, uh, the comparatively to its budget. So it says here, the movie made a hundred uh 89 million dollars what was the budget of this now let's look at the budget and you're gonna be surprised at this dang budget 16 million the movie was made on 16 million dollars and it made a hundred a oh dude that's that's a huge win that's a slam dunk you see this number and you think oh i've i've seen the marvels they at least made 300 million or something like that no <laughs> horror movie blumhouse has it down to a science man they make these movies so dirt cheap even if they suck they still end up making a profit <laughs> so yeah with numbers like that sony and blumhouse were like two green light two more my friend and keep that money rolling in and uh, i hate to say it the spin-off movie they kind of got my money on this even though i dislike this last one let me explain again to you so this movie, which is going to be the spinoff, it's called An Insidious Tale, a thread, thread, An Insidious Tale. It's going to start Kamel Nanjiani, Mandy Moore. They're going to play a couple, a mother and father in this movie. And this movie is going to be exploring the time travel elements of Insidious. If you don't remember, in the second Insidious movie, the family go into the further and then they do a bunch of stuff where we find out they were the ones actually kind of doing a little bit of the haunting of the first movie. Somehow in the further, you're able to go back in time and mess with stuff then. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And they never really explored that then. This movie, they're going to use the further to travel back in time to stop their daughter from dying. And then I guess death or whatever creatures live in the further are like, uh, you can't do that. We're haunting you and we're going to make sure your daughter dies this time. That actually sounds pretty cool to me. I, I think that sounds actually pretty fun. I'm willing to watch that. That sounds way more interesting than what the fifth movie did. So that's the spinoff. I have no idea what you're doing now with the main Insidious movie. I, I, I love the family, but since you didn't do a good job in the last movie, I don't know if I want to see them again. And I would have no interest in seeing another random uh, people get haunted by it because you're already doing something random and different with Kumail Mandy Moore. But okay, <laughs> this, that's what I, we don't even have a release date for this one either. Uh, this one's going to like pop up one week with the trailer and be like, oh, this is coming out in two months. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so anyways, that, that's an update on the Insidious World. Had to rant off a little bit on that just because oh, crazy stuff. Uh, then we also got the update. I've been waiting for this one, baby. I know what you did last freaking summer, baby. So we had heard that Sony has been planning to reboot this series, but they hadn't fully committed. Uh, you know, we just heard it's whispers, and that happens a lot of times. They say they want to do this, then for years it goes by and it never happens. They're locking in and putting a release date for 2025. Dude, 2025 is a packed freaking year, my guys. So 
Uh, this says here, let's see, when's the actual date I'm trying to see? Uh, I know what you did last summer. I don't, where's the actual date, my friend? Come on. Oh, there we go. July 18th, 2025. Sadly, we just don't have any details. It will, it's looking like it's going to be a direct continuation of the last two. If you have not seen the I Know What You Did Last Summer movies, please check them out. My first, uh, let me see, scary movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, that was my first, <laughs> uh, jump into that world is uh the scary movie version of i know what you did last summer oh my god i know what you did let's see the parody i just want to show that photo because i thought that was such a hilarious scene not that one come on now you're freaking ruining my stream oh yeah here this moment here where scary movie copies it and they hit the guy and he's like alive and he's walking away he's like i'm good now and they throw a boot and they hit him <laughs> i love that one that was so, so funny but the original two, I like a lot, dude. There's some people that don't. To me, those are like comfort horror movies for me, especially that first one. I like it so much. And the second one, kind of a dip in quality, and Jack Black is in it as a really annoying character. I got to review those two. I still have not seen the third one. I need to. I hear that one's terrible, though. Um, and so I'm like, I want it to be good. I, I want this to be good. They're saying Freddie Prince Jr. and uh, freaking, what's her name? Uh, Ju what's uh catherine da, 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 da. Oh, God. Uh, jennifer love i don't know why her name slipped my mind jennifer love hubert are in talks to return so it's not official yet but it's a continuation and i'm excited i hope it does good uh the the writer of the director of it is jennifer caitlin robinson who did the netflix movie do revenge i thought that was actually okay didn't like love it uh the only thing that does scare me is when they do interviews for this they really do talk about like the tiktok influencer generation and i'm like oh but they promise for old fans they're going to be easter eggs and callbacks hopefully not overdone where it's nostalgia bait but i have a lot of hope in this but after watching the strangers this weekend and that really burning me out uh I, i'm sad i'm a little sad <laughs> so we got that coming up i know what you did last summer i'm excited 2025 now let's get on to the blumhouse movies uh blumhouse shifted things around and now Megan 2 will be coming out uh, Jul uh, June 27th, 2025. Kind of giving you a little bit of what we can expect from Megan 2. That plot sounds so much fun. What they're saying is Megan is now, and this is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt, but it's from reliable sources. What they're saying now is that Megan is going to end up turning into the good guy of the series. Uh, that this movie, Megan 2.0, is going to be about a rival company that makes their own Megan doll. I think it's supposed to be Amelia, and the E will be backwards, just like in Megan. And Amelia is going to want to go after uh, the girl from the first Megan movie, and Megan is going to want to protect her because it's like, well, that's my friend. It's, if anyone's going to kill her, it's going to be me. But it's going to like flip things around, almost the way Terminator made Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in the first movie the villain, but then in the second movie he was the good guy. That's kind of what they're doing with Megan. Maybe it could work. Uh, obviously, I think they want to do this just because Megan is like such a fun character with her dance moves and all her quirky lines. They're like, you know, it'd just be better if we were rooting for her. And every movie, we just gave her a crazy bad guy for her to fight and protect this little girl. Okay, you know what? I'm down to see that. This movie, she's versus one. Third movie, she's versus like a group of robot girls or boys. I'd watch that. Why not? That could be fun. So... That's the rumor plot right now. We'll see if that turns out being good. But um, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I really enjoyed Megan. And it's one of the first doll horror movies where the doll isn't just sitting there and turning its head. Freaking Annabelle. The boy. Dead silence. <sighs> just calm down, Chris. So hopefully that's good. Then we got the, ba the Black Phone 2, which Blumhouse surprisingly decided to give it the October release date. I'm shocked by that. I would have thought they would have wanted to keep the success of Five Nights at Freddy's and give Five Nights the October release date because that worked out so well for them. They made a boatload of money. How much did Black Phone make, though? Let's see. Uh, Black Phone box office. $161 million. And it made its money back because, like, what's the uh, budget of it? I know it definitely is, like, $20 million, I bet. Black Phone budget was, yeah, it was made for, like, $16, $18 million, Made a lot of money. But Five Nights at Freddy's made so much more fnaf movie box office i just want to see oh yeah dude 297 i'm shocked i'm honestly surprised so maybe it's just how long it's going to take to make the movie and they're like maybe it's rushing it to do it october so they're skipping out on that but just to talk about black phone a little bit before we get into fnaf uh we have no idea 
what they're doing with this. Because spoilers, if you have not seen the Black Phone, I do recommend it. But the Grabber died by the end of that movie. And he was not supernatural in any way. He was a regular human guy who was just kidnapping kids and holding them in their basement. And the only thing supernatural about these movies was the dead kids in the basement would help out the victim to try and escape. Now, my theory for where they're going for this second movie is now that the the grabber died in that basement, he now has the ability to haunt whatever new owner goes into that house. And I feel we're going to see it almost reverse, where there's going to be a random dad with a family, a daughter, not a daughter, but like a wife and kids, and the grabber's going to start talking in the ear of that dad and be like, go kidnap a kid. Go put on some black balloons. Go put on my mask. Something like that. And it's and instead in the first movie where it's ghost kids helping a kid survive, it's gonna be a ghost serial killer training another serial killer. That that's what I think would be cool. A new grabber kind of story that would be kind of flipping things, doing something different, and things could go off from there. But um, we'll see. Maybe that's cliche. Maybe they have a better idea than that. But I feel like that's where they could go. All right. Now with the thing everybody's spamming and just wanted to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. That's where I want to be. Okay, December 5th, 2025, baby. Okay, I was shocked. We are getting a, a December release date for Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Let me see if I can find uh, the actual little... They, they posted like a little... Um, let's see here, past 24 hours. They posted like the uh, a little thing on it. Uh, yeah, here. I was like, oh, cool, there's a little video, and it's just showing off the thing. That's pretty nice. Okay. We know that they're going to be adapting the second video game. It's a, pretty much a given there. Even though in the second video game, I believe that's a prequel. I do definitely want some prequel elements. I'd be remiss if I'm not bringing up also the freaking uh, Matthew Lillard photo that popped up this, uh, this week. Dude, this is the coolest photo to ever exist in history. Let me pull it up again. I saw this and I was like, dude, I'm going I'm to I'm put that on a t-shirt. I'm going to hang that up, put it on my wall. It's going to be in my bathroom. Matthew Lillard standing there. It's probably going to freaking ask me to sign in. Yeah, I freaking knew that. Okay. Let me just go back, guys. Sorry. Freaking Matthew Lillard standing with the puppet of Scooby-Doo. Dude, this photo goes freaking hard, dude. Freaking Matthew Lillard's giving out the, what's up, brother? What's up, kids? You want to come to my pizzeria? <laughs> Dude, I I don't know how much this Scooby-Doo puppet is. I want to buy it. I want this thing, and I will put it up in my studio. Somebody get me in contact. It has a price tag on it. Look at the collar. There is a price tag on it. I'm buying it. I want it. I don't care who's selling it. Give it to me. That thing looks so badass and realistic to the movie. But this is just so cool. I wonder when this happened. Did the Jim Henson Corporation make the puppet of Scooby-Doo? as the stand-in for the CGI one of the movie. I don't know, but that was just so awesome. So I definitely want prequel elements in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 showing us more Yellow Rabbit, showing us Matthew Lillard, um, William Afton being maniacal, getting uh, you know some of those early kids dead and whatnot. Uh, they're going to go into the toy animatronic side of things. Uh, FNAF 2 toy animatronics. I got to sneeze, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, thank you, guys. I know y'all bless me in the chat because y'all are that great. But, dude, that's going to be cool to see the Jim Henson Corporation make these come to life. Now, the December release date, I don't think that that, that we should take that to mean that they're going to... Um, thank you, guys. Y'all are, are the best. That's why I love y'all. I don't think we should take the December release date to mean they're going to start including Christmas elements. They could. I'd be down for that. Some snow animatronics walking in there. Who doesn't love a horror movie in the snow? But I, I think it, it's just going to be a good choice for them. It's probably just what they had to do with these movies uh, getting there. Let me see what else saying. Uh, FNAF 2 can be delayed due to Avatar. Yep, I was just about to bring that up too. Um, there is also, December is usually a packed time. You know, Halloween was a good choice because you're in the horror season. You want that horror vibe. You want a good scary movie to watch. I was so shocked they just didn't release it around October again and buy into that Halloween hype going around. And instead, they're going with Christmas because what are the Christmas movies coming out in 2025? So December, okay, let's just go to a movie list. Uh, upcoming movies 
wiki. Wiki will have the, the, the good list that we need. <coughs> that did not uh, help me out there for, let's just say, 2025. And let's see what the one, because I know SpongeBob is one of them, but I love SpongeBob. He's unfortunately been really bad at uh, performing well in in uh you know what you would call it in movie settings so yeah you have avatar three and spongebob avatar is definitely something to be scared of uh that's just gonna end up making so much money i'm excited for avatar that's gonna eat away at so much profits it's a pg-13 movie as well i know it's not a horror film but it's gonna eat away uh it's a five so it it has like some room but five nights of freddy's had legs dude people were what just repeatedly watching and going in to see it i don't i think there's a real possibility this movie might end up being pushed to 2026. It'll be like a January movie. And I know people hate the January release, but also January is kind of a smart time. You know there's a fan base for this. People will go see it either way. Um, and January usually has no competition. It's a bunch of sucky, flat movies. Nobody wants to see. You put something like Five Nights at Freddy's in there, you could end up making a lot of money. Megan benefited from that. Megan was, a, uh, I think, a either a late January or early February movie, and there was no competition Megan ate up that box office because there was nothing good to watch. So we'll see, my friends. But uh, yeah, that's that's what's going on. I was shocked. I can't believe they took away their October release date. We'll see what happens. I can't wait till they start filming and we get some looks at the animatronics, some new casting choices. But things are going good, my friends. Things are going good in that. 